Humans are masters of projection. They interpret things, concepts, ideas, and others through empathy, which is summarily a projection of their own personal experiences, worldview, and inclinations to understand and define someone else's subjective world. This subjective concept they call empathy is a two-edged sword that on the one hand grants them the ability to be gracious to others for they can transpose themselves upon the experiences of others and internalize their struggles and difficulties but it conversely makes humans define a person or thing not entirely by its intrinsic characteristics or objective actions but rather their projection of themselves as that person or thing this existential dilemma unravels itself in many ways. An example will be that at the mention of the word king, for humans that are naturally aggressive, glory-seeking and domineering, the images that form in their heads is one of a conquering ruler draped in priceless robes and dictating to everyone and thing in their vicinity. Conversely, to a human with the natural inclination to be tender, considerate, and outward focused, the images that flash through their minds is one of a protector waving through whatever necessary obstacles to preserve, protect, and enrich everyone within their vicinity. Although defining the same thing, humans seem to predominantly perceive things through the lens of who they themselves are. Nothing escapes this harsh reality of human projections. It is applied to everything, including their ideas of God. To humans, if there is such a thing as God, He is a repulsive being that they would by all means reject. Humans internalize the idea of a being with infinite wisdom knowledge and power and ability to do anything and everything at will. They projected themselves upon this idea as they often do with everything, and the results of their projection was a ruthless dictator in control of the cosmos, trampling on whatever it wills, synchronizing to its pleasure everything in sight, and elevating itself to be the only relevant existence. They evoke images of a merciless totalitarian tyrant demanding its will or annihilation at the slightest displacement from that will. This is a mere reflection of what humans would do if they had all that power. So naturally, they shriek, despise and abhor the idea of anyone having all that power. Humanity cannot fathom the idea of a god that can at any scale be good. For to humans, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. They reject the idea of such a being, both from an ethical point of view and a realistic point of view. From an ethical perspective, no one being should have all that power. From a realistic point of view, if a being did indeed have all that power, he would make sure he is forcibly known by all, with no option. This is what humans will do if they had all that power. So the mere fact that they don't acknowledge any such being surely precludes the possibility of its existence. Then came this wretched looking scallywag claiming to be God. A miscreant born in the midst of animals, his first breath the stench of manure, his early days a road trip from village to village. Of the human species, he was the lowliest, a plebeian steeped in poverty and struggle from his waking moment. Humanity simply couldn't assimilate the idea of any being that could be classed as God the way they imagined it, taking human frame. They could not comprehend the artisan inside the paint, the author climbing inside the page, the playwriter taking the stage. Humanity could not imagine having all that power in the world and reducing itself 
to breathe the very air his breath sustains. Humanity could not make sense of the architect coming inside the paint. It was illogical to humans for a being that had no start and no end to willingly confine itself within time and space. It was ludicrous for them to imagine a being with infinite knowledge that transcends time and space, reducing itself to embrace a baby's mind. For humans, to be God is to have infinite power, and to have power is to dominate ruthlessly, to lord over, oppress, dictate, and bend all to your will. To have unstoppable power is to elevate yourself beyond reach and make yourself known in the most aggressive of fashion. So this deluded lunatic claiming to be God and yet was seen walking the streets, attending to the needs of the lowly humans, bathing in their rivers, eating their meals, renting donkeys, and squatting at random apartments must be a fraud. The great conundrum for humans and their struggle to believe in God is that if humans were God, they wouldn't leave an option to not believe in them. The mere fact that they don't believe in God assures them that there cannot be a God. This is just humanity ignorantly projecting their opinions of what a God should be. But God is altogether very different from that. The God that is unpleasant is the God of human imagination and projection. The God that is, is Jesus, the one and only God, a self-sacrificial servant, pervaded by love at the deepest level.